Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. I wanna know you, I wanna find you in every season, in every moment. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Um, thanks so much for coming out on a Sunday afternoon to celebrate with us. It's so exciting. Um, today, our general plan is we're just going to have a time of worship together, and then we're going to have um, a devotion about baptism. So for those of you who came to church this morning, you get a double dose. It's very cool. Um, we're also going to witness Annalise being baptised, and then we'll have a sharing time if some of you want to share a verse or a thought. And there are microphones, one here and one here that will be over here. And you do need to grab it so that you can share with everybody, because that way we can all hear. And then afterwards, we're going to have an afternoon tea time. So thank you for bringing along something, and we'd love you to stay and join with us. It looks like the tables are full. So thanks, it's awesome. As I look around under the lights, I'm so thankful for so many of you and the roles that you've played in our lives in the past and in the present. And there are many in the world who can't be here with us, all the Cape and Ray students who can't be here today. And um, they're going to be watching this, so we're going to record it. Um, so they can also share in this with us. But thank you for the role that you've played in the next generation. It's super important to have people who invest in the lives of our children. So thank you for your role in our lives. Today we're here to witness Annalise being baptised. 
And it's pretty simple. We just dunk her in the water. And it seems like a fairly simple thing to do, but the power of what it represents is really amazing. It's identifying with Christ in his death and in the power of his resurrection. And there are so many places that I'd love to jump into scripture and be like a first-hand witness of what's happening. And one of those places is at Jesus' baptism. Listen to this. And some of you probably heard all this this morning, but listen to this. Reading from Mark 1, verses 9 to 11. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. And if you love studying scripture, like I do, you can see where else in scripture you can find the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all depicted in that space and time. Wouldn't it be amazing to be there? The heavens torn open, the voice of God, the presence of Jesus coming up out of the water, and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. Wouldn't that be powerful? Let's reflect on that as we go into a time of worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we can come together as a family, a church family, a blood family, a wider worldwide family, and we are all your children, and we say thank you that today we can be together to celebrate the baptism of Annalise, to see her follow in your footsteps and obedience to you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are the one that brings us together. Amen. All right. Would you like to please stand with us and we'll sing through three songs. Sorry, we're having a few difficulties. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, we're all family here. <laughs> right. Okay, here we go.
the last song for this bracket. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Nice to see you all. Uh, hey, my name is Lyndon. For those of uh, you met, maybe we haven't met before, um, I'm Annalise's youth pastor. Uh, and I want to also give a special welcome to you all. Uh, it's so cool that you guys could be here as we celebrate this really special day and really special afternoon uh, as Annalise uh, proclaims and announces her faith and love for Jesus. And so it's great that you can be here to celebrate uh, with Annalise and the family, but also to witness uh, this great, great moment. What I've been asked to do is just spend a couple of minutes with you to talk about what baptism is. Uh, for some of you, you may not have been to a baptism 
uh, service before. Maybe, maybe for some of you, you've never come to a church before, um, and you love these guys so much, you've come in the door. So it's, it's great that you're here. But what I wanted to do is spend a couple of minutes just explaining what uh, is about to happen and why we as Christians who love Jesus do this. Uh, and I want us to look at a verse together that we actually looked at this morning uh, as we looked at baptism, but really it is the perfect passage to be talking about baptism. So we're going to have a look at it uh, again together. So if you have your Bibles, um, you, can, you can open them up and have a quick look at Romans chapter 6. It's just a couple of verses, so if you haven't got your Bibles, that's all right. I'll just read it out. Um, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. Paul says, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. So what Paul is saying here uh, in, in Romans chapter 3 is basically that baptism is a visual representation of the gospel. Now you might be going, well, what's, what's the gospel? The gospel is, is basically a message, good news, that Jesus Christ, uh, who is the Son of God, came to earth as a man and he died for the sins of the world, that if we put and then rose three days later, and if we put our trust in him, then our sins are forgiven and we can come back into a relationship with God. And so what Paul is saying here is that what is about to happen with Annalise is a visual representation of that good news. It's a symbol of our unity with Jesus. And so what's about to happen is Annalise is going to come down to this pool and she's going to go under the water and then she's going to come out again. And so as Annalise goes under the water, that symbolizes Jesus' death was hers. That when Jesus died, he died for Annalise. And he paid for her sins. And then as she's under the water, that represents his burial. And then as she comes out of that water, it represents his resurrection. And what that symbolizes is that uh, as Annalise comes out of the water, it, it symbolizes that Jesus' resurrection is hers as well. That is, Jesus has conquered death, so Annalise is no longer under the slavery of sin, but she is now forgiven. She is no longer under God's fair and righteous judgment, but she is now a child of God. And so what we're about to see here is a symbol, really, of transformation. And it's important to note that this is a symbol of transformation that has already occurred. You see, what baptism isn't, and I think uh, often if we ask someone, hey, what do you think it means when we get baptized? I think often people would go, well, it means getting saved. But actually, what, what Annalise is about to do here is actually symbolizing something that has already occurred. You see, Annalise loves and trusts Jesus. She's already a child of God, and so what she's about to do is a, a proclamation or a declaration of her love for Jesus and her devotion to him. And so it's really important to remember that nothing, uh, nothing spooky is about to happen. There's no transformation that is about to occur in Annalise. This isn't holy water or, or anything kind of mystical. It's just normal water. You can check it later if you want. Uh, this is just a, it's just a symbol. I like to think of it like a wedding ring. You see, seven years ago, my lovely wife, Abby and I, uh, we got married, and we both put these rings on. Now, it wasn't the putting on of the ring that caused us to be married, right? I mean, we kind of made promises before our friends and family and before God, and we signed some legal documents, and we were married. And then we put these rings on as symbols of the promises that we had made to one another. And so if I take this off, I'm not all of a sudden not married to Abby, right? Married, not married, married, not married. It doesn't work like that, right? It's a symbol a representation of something that has already occurred. And so we ask the question, why do I wear this? Why do I wear this ring? And I think there's three reasons, and they actually apply to baptism as well. You see, I wear this ring so that I have a visual 
symbol showing others that I am united to Abby, that I belong to her. Secondly, I also wear this ring as a reminder to myself that I have made promises and I'm committed and united to my wife. But thirdly, I wear this ring to display my devotion to Abby so that when she sees this ring, she knows that I am hers and she is mine and that I've made promises to her. And you see, baptism is actually really, really similar. It's a symbol, a a representation. And so as Annalise gets baptized now, there's three things that she uh, is showing, and there's three reasons, I guess, for why uh, she would get baptized. Firstly, Annalise getting uh, getting baptized announces publicly that Annalise is united to Jesus, that he is her savior and her king, and that she is part of God's family. Secondly, it's a reminder to Annalise herself that she is a child of God, that she can call the creator of the universe her dad, and lastly, it is a display of devotion to God in obedience, a display of devotion. And so Annalise getting baptized today is her announcing to all of us here and to God himself that she belongs to him. And that's that's the reason we come to celebrate And it's so cool to have one of our youth getting baptized, right? It's exciting. And hopefully that's the reason why you're uh, here this afternoon. So Annalise, I want to say to you, uh, on behalf of all of us, that we love you. And we are really, really excited that you're wanting to take this step in obedience to proclaim that you love Jesus. And we will be praying for you throughout your life as you journey with Jesus, that you'll continue to love and trust them. And I want to remind you that, you know, throughout life, there's going to be really hard times. And there's going to be really tough times, maybe in the near future, maybe uh, down the track. And so I want to encourage you in those times to let today be a reminder of God's faithfulness to you, that he called you to himself, that he has kept you to this very point now to remind you of his faithfulness to him. He is so much bigger than you can comprehend, and he loves you so much more than you will ever understand. Uh, Today is a significant day. Let it be a reminder for you in those really tough times of the promises that God has made to you and that you've made to him as well. And so I want to pray, and then we're going to hear Annalise's story of how she's kind of come to this point to be baptized. Um, But will you just close your eyes with me and... I'm going to pray on behalf of us all for Annalise. Father, we thank you so much for your grace to us, your amazing gift of salvation. And we just acknowledge this afternoon that we are so unworthy of that. We don't deserve your love and your forgiveness, but you have shown it to us anyway. And we thank you so much that you have saved Annalise, that you have called her to yourself and that she is now a child of of you. Father, I pray for Annalise uh, that she would have a, a deep foundation in your word, that she would know what it means to love you and to trust you. And as life comes and temptations come and suffering comes and uh, difficulty comes, I pray that she would cling to the promises that you have made, that you are with her, you will never leave her, that our salvation is secure, not in what she has done, but what Jesus has done. And so would you be her rock in those hard times? And I pray that she would be able to look back on today as she makes this declaration, remembering that she belongs to you and that you are her father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, put your eyes to the screen and we're going to hear from Annalise herself virtually. Hi. My name is Annalise and I'm going to share with you a part of my testimony about a friend in my life. I have a friend who walks beside me wherever I go and has always been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. He holds my hand even when I drop his and he comes to find me when I run away. This friend of mine never lets me out of his sight and he provides for me everything that I need. He sends me into battles, but he gives me what I need. That doesn't mean I always use it though, because 
Sometimes I want to do things my way. When I wander away from what he says, he leaves everything else to come and find me. When I do something that breaks his heart, he forgives me because his grace and mercy is new and overflowing every day. This friend of mine is mind blowing. Much of what he does, I don't even understand. He knew me before I was born. He even knew you. He knows everything. He knows what angels look like and what they sound like when they sing. My friend was born just like you and me. He grew up with brothers and sisters, a mum and a dad. But there was something different about his birth. He is perfect. He was born a king. He was born to save you and he was born to save me. He was born to save the world from sin. He gave his life to take away the punishment of all sin. My friend loves me more than anyone else can and he wants me to love him with everything I have. He loves me even though I sin and make mistakes. And he wants me to live for him. He wants me to follow in his ways. He wants me to obey him. And that's what I want to do. I want to follow him. I want to trust him and I want to obey him in everything. Now, I can't do this by my strength, but I can do this by the strength of my friend of his spirit living in me. So that is why today I'm wanting to get baptized because I want to show people that I want to live for him. I want to live for my friend Jesus. I want to obey his commands and I want to follow him and do everything that he asked me to do. I want to live my life for my friend Jesus. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength. So now I'm going to invite my dad and my hubby and Annalise. And now this is the time to get baptised. You'll be able to see, because they're going to put it up on the big screens, um, and we're just going to sing a song after this, and then it's time for you to share if you'd like to. Remember to use a microphone. Well, greetings to you all. It's uh, um, been a real privilege um, to have been asked to come today and to baptise Annalise, and uh, I've been really looking looking forward to this time. Um, I've got a scripture that I would like to share for Annalise, and I think I'll just do that now before I go into the pool and get all wet. Um, if anyone served, it's from John chapter 12. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. And I think that's such a that's been a scripture that has been a, a favourite of mine for a long time. And I I believe that when we are following the Lord, then um, if we are with Him, as we've seen in Annalise's testimony today. Um, he is there before us waiting and I know that Annalise has that desire in her heart to just be with the Lord and um, to honour him in this way um, just before I do baptise uh, go into the pool I just like to acknowledge too that um, being a grandfather to ask to baptise um, is a real privilege but I, I thank the pastors of the church here too um, that I'm sort of taking some of their role, I guess, in baptising. But thank you for um, enabling me to be able to do this today. I, I honour you all for that. Um, just, for, just before I do um, baptise Annalise, I see four things that are happening here, Annalise. One is the, you're identifying with the death and resurrection of the Lord. You're going under the water and you're rising again. Second thing to scripture is that you are being cleansed. The water is a symbol of washing of the past life and a beginning of a new life. The third thing 
is the declaration. It's a public declaration before all your friends and family and the whole congregation here. And fourthly, it's a part of joining the church. The scripture says that uh, when we are baptized, we become part of the body of Christ. And um, those four things are what I ask when I baptize you today. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you desire to be baptized? Yes. Let's just... As I was thinking about your baptism, I mean, the first thing is excitement. Congratulations, it's awesome. Um, and the other thing, I was wondering, I was thinking about how long I've known you. And I've pretty much known you your whole life, which is pretty incredible. Um, and just thinking, especially about the last couple of years, where I've really seen you grow um, in your faith as you've come to love God more. 
as you have sought to serve him faithfully. And that's such an encouragement to watch and praise God for the work that he's done in you already. I just have a couple of verses to read from you from Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught and abounding in thanksgiving. And that's my prayer for you as you go forward. Woohoo, Annalise, well done, walking in obedience. That's really, really a delight for me to see. I love that we just had that beautiful song, if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. That's a scripture that comes from John 8, verse 36. And I wanted to share that especially for you in your baptism because when I was baptised, I thought, great, a clean slate. I'm sinless. I'm perfect. I'm fresh. Let's try and maintain this as long as I can. (laughs) Needless to say, it didn't last long. (laughs) Um, I couldn't, in my own strength, keep myself perfect or clean like a freshly washed white T-shirt. I very quickly became stained and blotted again in my own self. But the fact is that this has already been done. The work for you has already been finished. That Jesus Christ lived the perfect life on your behalf and that you now are washed clean by him. And that's a a washed clean that can never be stained, not by anything that you'll do or fail to do. So if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. All right, so uh, I get to just yeah, have this, um, this time with Annalise, and it's a huge pleasure and a privilege to be able to do this up here as well. So I'm going to pray for Annalise. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for Annalise's obedience. And as we've heard today uh, multiple times, this is really just a, a symbol um, and just a public display um, of what's already taken place. And Father, we thank you so much for Annalise doing this step. Um, and we know that um, yeah, this is just a continuation of her life, um, her love, her desire to follow after you. And Father, we know that um, yeah, that it's it, uh, it's not the the answer for everything. Um, for as Kelly said, it's not the answer for a a, uh, a life without sin or blemish. And Lord, but it's an acknowledgement of um, Annalise's desire, her commitment to follow you. And we thank you so much for that. We thank you for the family, for the friends and the church family that are here to witness this um, this time for Annalise as well. Amen. Hi Annalise. It's lovely to be here today and to witness your baptism. And Anne and I have got a verse for you that's important to us and has been helpful in our lives, and I trust it will be in yours. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you. I will teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And that I will counsel you with my eye upon you is not God trying to watch you to catch you out, but as a heavenly Father wanting to keep you and to watch over your life for good. So we just trust you to him today. And it's just thank you for having us here to witness your baptism. A little story. Uh, End of last year, I was organising a conference for MMM And as I looked through the registrations, I realized they had quite a number of kids coming. And I thought, we really need to do something for these kids. And I thought, who could run me a kids program? (laughs) And for some reason, awesome Annalise and Sophie came to mind. And so they came to our conference out at Narawahia and did a great job of running the kids program for those kids. In fact, one of the kids told me again a story that Annalise and Sophie taught them at conference just this week so I know they did an awesome job but what impressed me was when they were leaving conference they gave me a card 
of thanks for giving them an opportunity to serve. And I thought that was an awesome attitude. Um, over my years, I've asked many people to lend a hand in different ways, and not many have said thanks, eh? Um, <laughs> so it was really cool. And it might have just been that her mum raised her really, really well. But still, they girls had written in this card, thank you for this opportunity to come and serve at this conference. And so, Annalise, I just encourage you to keep that spirit of serving. You have honoured God in your testimony today so well. I'm really so impressed and moved. And my heart's prayer for you is that that testimony will grow and that heart to serve and be thankful for those opportunities to serve will continue. And I look forward to seeing where God takes you in this life. It's awesome to witness your baptism today. Thank you for making us all so welcome. Very cool. Hi, Annalise. Um, I've got the privilege of working with Annalise at Youth Group. I'm one of her um, small group leaders, so it's been really cool to get to know Annalise, I think, for the last year, more closely. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to say that I, myself, have been really encouraged just by your faith. Um, yeah, it's, it's just awesome, you know, working with teenage girls and how they can encourage you as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to really encourage you to um, stay strong and, yeah, just keep walking in your faith in a verse that popped into mind. Um, was just Joshua 1 verse 9. Um, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Um, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So yeah, just cling to that verse as well. And yeah, I just really encourage you to keep going strong. So doing the math, I met you almost seven years ago at Cape and Ray. Can you believe that? Sammy was talking about glow warm at the time, so it was a little bit ago. <laughs> but I am so grateful that I get to be here today and that I've gotten to see you grow up and become such an amazing young woman over these last years. Just a couple of verses, because um, you're probably getting colder and colder standing up there. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. And the other verse that God has been bringing up, just for me lately, with everything going on, is Micah 6, 8. With everything happening, what does God actually require of you? Is to seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. So the two things I'll leave with you that I think you already do, which is amazing, is to abide in him and to keep walking humbly. So that's what I'll say. I know some of you don't like microphones, so if you've got a verse or a passage or something that you'd like to share with Annalise, there's a little notebook at the back down by Abby, and there are pens. And if you want to write a note for her or a verse, that would be really cool for those who don't like microphones. This is a prayer I've read or prayed for Annalise for a very long time, 16 years now. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Sarah. It's my, uh, my privilege to pray for Annalise just as we finish up. Annalise, has she come back in? She hasn't, that's okay. 
we're going to pray to be we're going to be praying to God anyway, right? So, uh, so that's fine. Um, the verse that I had, I guess I'll write in the little in the little book back there. Before we do, hey, I know that there is a lot of the Cape and Ray family here. Just really wanted to say a, a special thanks for for popping out. Uh, our obviously our our hearts are uh, are hurting for for you guys at, at the moment um, and all that is going on through uh, th- through the yeah. The COVID situation there, so uh, and, and but we, I just really want to say a massive thank you uh, to the to the Cape and Ray family. You have had a massive influence on so many lives around the world, uh, but you need to realise also that you've had a massive influence on so many lives around here. Uh, we, we think of the Burgess uh, family, obviously, because they're part of our uh, our church family. But so many lives, uh, and, and just and and the the message that you guys proclaim. Uh, uh, the, the, the life of Christ living out through us uh, is such an important message, and you guys proclaim that with such clarity. So I just want to say thank you uh, to, as a team to you guys and, and for your ongoing influence. And uh, as a staff team, we continue to pray for, for you guys regularly. So at the moment now, and Elise hasn't popped back in, that's okay. We will we'll pray and we will and we'll finish up here. Our Father, we give you thanks and we give you all the praise and all the glory for what has gone on here this afternoon. Uh, we, we are so delighted to see Annalise go through the waters of baptism. It, it warms our hearts. It, uh, it, gives, it fills us with, with such joy. And yet we know uh, as much as we love Annalise, it is, uh, it is not because of her goodness that we are overjoyed. It's because of your greatness that we are overjoyed. It's your greatness and your, uh, your Holy Spirit working in Annalise that has produced the fruit that we are a witness to today. And so we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Uh, we pray for Annalise as she continues to, uh, to walk through this life and live her life for you. We ask that you would uh, just particularly and specially wrap your hands around her and that you would carry her, and that you would continue to fill her with your spirit, and that she might uh, be able to, uh, through by your power, to live the life that you call her to live here on earth. We pray that her life might continue to be a shining light for you, a shining light for the gospel to the to a lost world around her, and that uh, yeah, that you would just particularly uh, walk through her, walk with her uh, through this life, and uh, and allow her. Uh, to be a shining light for Christ. So we thank you for this time. We thank you that we have been able to uh, just enjoy a a wonderful celebration this afternoon. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray all these things. Amen. Thanks. Sarah, is there anything, other details? I guess there's some afternoon tea to to go and have there. She's back. Hi, Annalise. We have prayed for you, and uh, it's great, great to see you, and great to see you back in here. And we, yeah, we just really want to say we, we love you as a church family, and we are so pleased to, to have seen you go through the waters of, of baptism and proclaim this. So anyway, we're finished up here. Thanks a lot.